it, please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And a month has gone by. Really, it doesn't seem like a month, but a month has gone by already. And there's a new Doctor Who magazine on the shelves. Uh, I'm going to do a review for you. We're going to do a bit of a... Imagine you're at W. H. Smith and you want to have a bit of a, uh, you know, a, a flick through, a thumb through to see, is this for you? Is this the purchase you want to make? Uh, uh, well, it depends, really. It depends, it depends if you like Target books, which is what this one is all about. Weird thing is, I think this but this issue is polybagged. The uh, the print version is polybagged because it comes with this like mini Target book with uh, sample chapters, but not the digital version. WTF? What the hell? I mean, really? I I, I think we paid Brent Bates at the same price, don't we? Uh, why why did I get that? But I don't know, uh, so I can't I can't really yeah uh, um, uh, uh, attest to that. But I will review the magazine. Is it worth your time? Is it worth your money? Before we get there, before we get there, can I ask you guys? Can you hit the like button? Everybody likes to be liked, baby. <laughs> it's true. Everybody likes to be liked. Can you hit the like button? Can you hit the share button? That really, really is helpful. Can you hit the subscribe button? Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's always been the case that, you know, teeny tiny, uh, uh, you know, independent voices do need your help. Do need your help quite a lot to you know, remain viable in any way on YouTube. They do, they do, you know, uh, bless them uh, for uh, uh, favor uh, uh, massive multinational corporations. Now more than ever, as it would seem, now more than ever. So you hit the subscribe button, it really helps. Commenting, commenting really does help. Uh, apparently that, that really helps the algorithm. I don't even know what an algorithm is, but apparently it helps it. And if it's helped, apparently I get help. So, uh, yeah, can you, can you comment? I will reply to, to yeah, e well, I, I endeavor to reply to each and every one one of your comments. Uh, uh, yeah, so like, honestly, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so, when I do a popular video and I've got like 100, 200 comments to reply to, I'm like, oh, hey, no. But yeah, I'm very happy that you do comment. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, if you subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel as a, as a wee thank you, you can uh, enter my weekly competitions. The the prize this week is Judge Dredd, Brothers in Blood. This is basically Judge Dredd and his family. So it's got his clone brother, Rico, who's kind of worried that he's going to be like the other clone brother, Rico, who ended up on Titan. Long story. Yeah, listen, you don't really need to know much about Judge Dredd to enjoy it. any issue of Judge Dredd. Fantastic uh, uh, art. Simon Fraser, Carlos Aquino, uh, Colin McNeil, Charlie Argonne. Uh, just tons and tons and tons of really, really good, uh, uh, really good art and stories in there. All you need to do to win it, subscribe to the channel, which is the reason I do this. Subscribe to the channel, and in the comments, leave the hashtag Judge Rico. Judge Rico, everybody's favorite. Uh, uh, um, Judge Dredd sibling, I guess. Yeah, I, honestly, I quite like Judge. Judge, uh, what's it? What's his name? Kraken. Yeah, that whole Oz thing. I quite like Judge Kraken. If you don't know what I'm doing about? Go and check it out. It's very good. Uh, something else to check out. Something else to check out is the video notes. The video notes where you'll find out everything you need to know to win that uh, when that prize and also a wee little snip of information i linked to my indiegogo launching in about oh, under two weeks now actually i'm actually freaking out a bit now it's get, getting me closer i got these two graphic novels here which i which i will be pr uh, proffering to you uh, uh if i'm put, building up a, 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 a an email list you get one of these four uh, uh very tasteful art cards with any purchase but also you get the inside track on how to get stuff like i'm giving a ton of free stuff away on the uh, uh, on the launch night, the uh, be Saturday the thirteenth, and also there's massive like hidden discounts that you you only get by signing up, and you know it, again you get you get a free gift if you get the package with all four art cards, you're gonna get a fifth one, a chaser card for absolute free. Uh, uh, so you know just as a wee thank you because I I am ridiculously and pathetically grateful. You know who I don't think is ridiculously and pathetically grateful? Uh, anybody working in legacy media, <laughs> right? Right. So which is which does sadly include. Doctor Who magazine. So here we are. This is the latest Doctor Who magazine. Um, really focusing on Target books. Not a sign of Jody anywhere on the cover as always. Now I have seen the polybag version. I do think you can just see a little bit of Jody underneath one of the thing, but like not much, which is kind of I think what their their market research has told them uh, is probably good. I, if the, the market research probably tells them to get rid of that logo. But uh, uh, the card of office says, no, nothing doing, mate. That, that's staying on everything. That taint is going to be everywhere. So again, quite quite a nice cover. I do like this amalgamation of uh, ta of Target book covers uh, uh, throughout the years. And yeah, it's got that Target thing. So I think this is a pretty uh, successful cover, right? So let's, let's, let's have a look inside. Uh, pull to open, which I think is fun. So listen, the first thing I see is the Lone Cyberman, which is it just the... Uh, yeah, well, yeah, season, yeah, the, was it season 12? Yeah, season 12. Great, looks great. Damn, let's zoom in a bit. Like, like, looks great. Looks like a really interesting villain, like an emotional Cyberman. Oh, I just went up. 
It's flicked a page somehow. I don't know. Uh, an emotional side man, I, I, yeah, falling apart. I, I loved it. I love the idea. Uh, execution, absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. So, you know, uh, that's a big thing in this issue. Uh, let's have a look. And then we got uh, the uh, uh, welcoming things. Oh, and now we see your first reason not to buy it, right? Your first reason not to buy it. Uh, Benjamin Cook. Ben Cook. Oh, little, little Benny Cook. Uh, love to tell people that they're wrong and lives on Twitter and just insulted so many Doctor Who. He did me as well, but as he like, as I you know, really lost that Twitter uh, interaction, right? Like classically, massively. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, yeah, it did its thing. I'm, I don't mind buying it. A lot of people will not pick up the magazine if he's in it. And I okay, look, look, Ben, mate, Ben, Ben, look at you. God, I mean, you're nearly 40. You look like, you, yeah, being 20 is cool when you're 20. Uh, uh, you know, when you're 40, you should have kids and be married and, like, you know, have a life, uh, which is probably why he spends his life on Twitter being, like, rude to people. Uh, an incredibly stupid idea to uh, uh, to include her in the magazine because, you know, that, that will push people away. It just will push people away. Um, but, you know, reality is not so, like, you know, they, they, they really like. Uh, Paul Schoonzo, I'll be interested to see what he, he has to say. I do like Paul Schoonzo and uh, Jack Reiner. Okay, yeah. Uh, <coughs> so John Bishop begins filming. Yeah, he's a new companion, uh, McCoy and Blu-ray. <coughs> yes, we covered that. Uh, Universe as Ice Warriors. <coughs> um... Yeah, I'm not really that, that interested in this, but I'm, I'm kind of surprised, right? I'm not really interested in, like, a, what was it, the four-box set, set of, so it's like, well, how many stories? It's like, it's a 16-part epic, right, with the unit versus the Ice Warriors. I'm not really that much of a fan of modern unit. Uh, I, I like the Ice Warriors a lot, a lot but uh, it's not really enough to bring me in. I'm going to talk about it on my live stream tonight, but, yeah, this is not really enough for me. I thought this woman here, I've got to check out her name. I thought she was the companion to the fourth Doctor uh, in a uh, uh, in what in in a season coming up, right? I thought that's who who she was. I, I mean, look, she's got a very distinctive look. Yeah, she she's she's a black woman with white hair. You don't see that often, right? So it's a very distinctive look. These T-shirts look freaking awesome, right? Uh, I am the master. You will be me. A new body at last. Yeah, listen, these are all cool. I like these. Uh, I'm afraid they don't. They don't make them in uh, 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 fat rabbi sizes. <laughs> I'm afraid. Uh, Darling, that. Let's see what the Darling download is. That you can. Uh, the soundtrack for this year's uh, new special is available from Silver Screen. Not interested. Okay, and Segula, whatever his name is. Uh, yeah, I, if I never hear any any of his work again, it'll be fine. The Galaxy Forum. Uh, that's kind of cute. What this? Listen. I love people loving Doctor Who because I love Doctor Who, right? And I hate the character era, but I love it that people love it, right? And if you love it, good for you. I think it's really cool. I, lo I love seeing stuff that fans do. And, they, you know, they recreated that scene, uh, which I thought was garbage, right? <laughs> they recreated that scene I th that, that I thought was garbage. Uh, uh, but still nice, right? And this uh, uh, photo shoot of Radio Control done, it's a pretty darn cool. Good, good for him. I, even though it keeps popping back up. Uh, weird eye stalk though, right? Weird eye stalk. That's okay. Fine. Um, the star letters to uh Philip Martin apparently, who's who's in this in the issue. Uh, again, this I just like. I like the artwork. I like, I like people liking Doctor Who. It's nice. It's nice. And, and if they, because you know what, I relate to how much I like it, and how much pleasure I've got from it, and so I really. Even though I get again, I fundamentally do not think this era of Doctor Who is in fact Doctor Who. I really don't because it's just too incredibly different. Uh, I, I I really love people still liking it, but I tell you this: I always make jokes about uh, these new uh, the the uh, first special looking a bit you know sex toy ish. This kind of makes it look worse to me. Okay, I don't know. Listen, maybe it's me. Maybe I just have dildos on the brain. Could be. Could be. I don't know. More letters. And again, yeah, listen. Ah, oh, sweet. Listen, it's great. I just wish that she loved a good era of Doctor Who, right? Uh, and yeah, good for her. Good for her. Yeah, so let's see what goes on the River Song. I am not really interested in, the, in this. It, this is the first of the River Song ones that I haven't bought, right? I have all of them, but I still haven't listened to Series 7, which basically means, uh, yeah, you know, you've got to do more to impress me. Time and Space Visualizer. Let's see where everybody else is. Uh, uh, Peter Capaldi reads 1984. Whoa! Yes, I'm up for that. Uh, in a new George Orwell book, uh, audio books from uh, Penguin Random House. 
Okay, uh, Sarah D. Clark. I'm not sure who she is. Uh, she may, yeah, I got, I'm going to get a bunch of comments saying, you idiot, she's this person, blah, blah, blah. Uh, fine. It's a sin. I've been trying to watch this the last few nights, but uh, look, last night I had to watch The Expanse, uh, which I I like this season. I Nerd Roddick was not happy with it. I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, but I never enjoyed it as much as he did. So, you know, fine. And what else did I, I finish? Uh, Snowpiercer. Freaking love Snowpiercer. I, I, and I, I don't know why, but I really do enjoy it. Um, in this month in 1980, or this must have been the uh, the birth of uh, Absalom Dak. Um, okay, interesting. I I I, can't, I always think I'm going to like that feature, and, and I never do. This is something I'm probably reading my live stream tonight. Public image. How is Tom Spilsbury going to uh, 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 spin it being the lowest rated special of all time? Right? <laughs> How is he going to spin that? Um, uh, let's wait and see. Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I just saw, I saw a random sentence. Let's look at this. Uh, although Revolution of the Daleks, admittedly the lowest rated Doctor Who special of the day, uh, it's the first to go below, uh, dip below 7 million. In context, it's a rather good result. No, it's not. In the context of being on the failing BBC, which, it, you know, the reason BBC is failing is, yeah, pro c candidate is one there, you know, uh, is uh, 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 Doctor Who. The, re the reason people are left Doctor Who is people, the same reason people are left BBC, right? Which was unthinkable a few years ago. Uh, and now it's not. So now we're on to the main feature of this. Uh, a bunch of stuff about... Uh, um, Target books, right? And I, I do like this, the, the, the use of cover art. It's really clever. Again, good graphic design, this issue. Yeah, uh, very good good uh, uh, graphic design. Very reminiscent of that very, very classic Target book feel. Unfortunately, for me, this doesn't really connect because uh, I I am a little bit too young, right? I uh, My parents were early adopters. My dad, my, myself as well. We weren't the first people to have uh, you know a video cassette record, a VHS. Uh, and so I just, when you wanted to relive Doctor Who, I just went to the tapes, right? That's uh, if I if I was like three or four years older, I would have gone to the books. And I remember uh, when they had Time and the Rani on, I uh, I bred that one to fill in some blanks, right? And then I need to, and then I remember I remember it, uh, Remembrance of the Daleks. That was really good. Again, that was just a good fun read. But basically, I I should have learned to read this way. And instead, I learned to read from 2000 AD. So this doesn't really like connect to me as much. So this is quite a major article. Let's see, let's see how long it goes on for. Uh, open page overview. I will. I am. I have. Fine. Let's go down. Do, do, do. So this is a big. This is a big old feature. It's a uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So it's the uh, the main feature is is five pages long. Let's have a, let's have a quick thumb through of it. Um, because yeah, again, listen. I do, I love all the. I I I am not disinterested in target organizations. I do, and I do love the uh, uh, uh how they recreate the, the, the cover art. This is an interesting article, right? This this has me on board, right? I would read this. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, fine. And uh, what is that? I've never seen that cover for a uh, giant robot before. But yeah, that's what I mean about there being the very uh, traditional uh, Doctor Who logo, which really fits into the... Um, yeah, the diamond logo when it, when, it, uh, when it was huge. Better than this logo, I'm afraid. Uh, now I was, I was ne never a, a massive fan. And yeah, I was, I'm a graphic designer, so I was like, ooh. Although John Freeman, the editor of the Doctor Who magazine at the time of that logo, he has a really clever idea of putting like a circle around it to to enclose it. And that that you know that that indeed really worked. Uh, I think I read a bunch of these on Mysterious Planet because again, just to work out what the hell's going on. So this is it. This is something I would definitely read. I, I am interested in uh, this interview with Rob, Rob Sherman, Simon Gurria. Simon Gurria has apparently written the first of the new Big Finish uh, kind of target book range, you know, like original Doctor Who uh, novelizations. Uh, read, this is read by John Culture. So, yeah, I'm big in for that. So, yeah, Robert Sherman, I, uh, yeah, I, th this is definitely, okay, we're up to seven pages I'm interested in. Mark Gattis, yeah, listen, it, I didn't rush to buy the Crimson Horror because I just didn't think it was a very good episode, right? I, I, I guess I could, re I, I really should, uh, 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 you know, re revisit it. I watched the first episode of Babylon 5 last night. That was a, that was pretty pretty darn cool. Okay, if I would realised there was a bunch of like women in Victorian underwear, skimpy Victorian underwear, yeah, including Jenna Coleman, I probably would have got uh, gone to it much quicker. Yeah, listen, uh, I prefer this version of uh, of uh, ta ta uh, Talents of Wing Chiang. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more uh, 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 what's it current. Okay, you talked me into it, Mark Gaddis. I'm going to rewatch the Crimson Horror, right? Uh, but these books do interest me. And then no, I'm not interested. Uh, and like I. I 
Joy Wilkinson. Like, this was a pretty bland, mediocre episode. I think she would have done much better under Stephen Moffat or under uh, Russell T. Davis. At least it had a real monster in it, which was good. Um, I just find her a bit vacuous, right? I, I see. I, I used to enjoy her on the Blu-rays when I think it was season fourteen. When I, I'm interested in new people's uh, people new to Doctor Who's view of it, right? That that definitely. Is, but, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Just saying, uh, like a gen. Look, listen, <sighs> the universe right now is tribal. We're divided into two camps, uh, uh, horribly so. Uh, and it's uh, not something I like and I'm happy about. But Joy is very, very much in the Jodie Whittaker is the bestest ever camp. Uh, and she's just a horrible, horrible doctor, you know, in my opinion. Uh, and also, you know, the, the use of this logo on the target book is just, it's so counterproductive, right? It's so, all that, as I say, uh, Simon, who I was on a, a uh, on a Type 40 uh, uh, podcast with, uh, really doesn't like this, uh, this classic logo, this... Uh, what what has become the classic logo, right? It was adopted for the TV movie, and then they they basically adopted it when they broke the franchise into two. Um, that for me really works. It feels Doctor Who, but he didn't like it. He liked the uh, original one. Uh, this logo, I, like who buys this nonsense? I, I I guess they must. I guess it must sell, right? I guess there must be enough people to buy it to make it worthwhile. Uh, wow, I love that picture of uh, Old Sylvester McCoy. I'm gonna use that in something. Something or other. That's really kind of cool. That, that, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I will use that. Uh, so this is you know, a ridiculously long article about the making of the trailer for Season 24. It's the uh, Season 24 Blu-ray, which is the only Blu-ray box that I haven't pre-ordered as yet because it's pretty bad, right? It's four pretty bad stories. Bless them. I love The Seventh Doctor. I even think Mel is, 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 has been rehabilitated big time on, uh, 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 on, uh, on audio. But this seems like, it's just like, how many, it's like one, two, uh, how many, three, a three-page article uh, on on the making of a trailer. Basically, it's not that interesting, right? It's not that interesting. There's a lot more interesting stuff going on. And blimey, I, I had no idea this was the same person. And yeah, I can see why. Uh, uh, young and gorgeous and uh, uh, been been beaten to death by old father time. Yeah, listen, darling, it happens to us all. Happens to us all. But listen, at least you have, at least you have a, pr a, lot, lot, a lot of evidence you were young and gorgeous. Uh, Blue Kang's the best, baby. Blue Kang's the best. Uh, what's this? The uh, Oh, fine. So this is a uh, interview with the guy who played Rashad. He didn't do a terrible job. It was just... Good ideas with no resolution, badly written. But he didn't do a bad job. Uh, interesting looking face. Not interested at all. Oh, look, he was a bloke from Game of Thrones. Ah, and you recognize him. There you go. He's the one that, what's the name, turned into uh, back when Game of Thrones was good. So <laughs> there you go. It's, 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 it's tragic. What a great design, right? What a great and interesting design. I really wish it was good. Right? I really wish it was in a good story. Uh, this goes on for a bit, blimey. I said, how many pages is it? So you've got one, two, three, four. Okay, four pages. Oh, right, listen, I'll say this. Um, I, I may have mentioned I don't like the current era of Doctor Who. Right? I may have, I may have come up in conversation. Uh, it, listen, that comes up in conversations when people ask me about the laundry. <laughs> that comes up in any conversation. Um, uh, but, you know... It's nice that, Doc, that Doctor Who magazine is trying to appeal to the, a spectrum of fans rather than only these fans, right? Uh, I guess they, re they they want to appeal to only these fans because they can't stand people who aren't like them. They really, they, again, Ben Cook. Ben Cook is very, very uh, typical, right? Uh, uh, but they know there's not enough of them to make a viable magazine. Fine. So then we got, so now we have the Ben Cook interview talking to the editor. Uh, she's done 70 episodes of the show. Blimey. Uh, I again, what a great Cyberman design, right? What a great Cyberman design! I don't want to tell you. Um, and am I interested in any way for a two, a three page puff piece? Not really. Uh, what, what, yeah, what's that uh, box that said? When I got the gig, I was thrilled, overwhelmed. It was the most amazing block, okay? I, whatever, but it's kind of like, yeah, you know, they're talking to the editor, they're like, uh, where's Chris Jibnall? Why couldn't he write production notes? I mean, I thought they're beathering away. He just He's just useless. <laughs> I mean, really? I think it's fair to say he's just freaking useless, isn't he? Uh, also, he's just waiting wait for this page to open up. 
Okay, collectivity. What 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 is collectivity? Although I yeah, yeah I think that's the these are Alex's uh, Alistair Pearson. Uh, these was the top of the tenth planet, right? That's I think that's him. Although who's this? Uh, I think he has somebody else do the backgrounds for a while. And yeah, look at this—the power of the Daleks. Yeah, this was totally him. I yeah, Alistair Pearson. There you go. Um, you know, Doctor Who magazine did a whole run. I oh, must be about what. Donkey's years ago, maybe 20 years ago, where they gave out every month for like e about a year uh, four uh, postcards of the different artwork. It's mainly Alison Pearson's artwork for, for the target novel novelization. So again, collecti collectivity, I, I guess it's about, well, let's find out what it's about. Uh, for most dedicated collectors, owning all the Doctor Who no uh, novelizations isn't enough. Uh, Jamie Lemon meets Target completed. Target, novel target completed. Wow. So the people who want every edition? Okay, listen. <laughs> there's fandom everywhere. Like, there's obsessive fandom everywhere. Um, yeah, listen, I remember all these different... I, I, I All these different uh, runs of them. That's why I was kind of surprised that uh, 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 Simon, uh, Simon, he was really against them not using this logo. Anything with that logo was bad. He didn't. He wasn't up for it. Which, okay, but okay, these guys really like target, no, uh, target novelization. Do you wow, wow, do you, look at this. Do you think somebody, like, I got this one, but it's not quite good enough, so I want it. Really? Listen. But far better for me to uh, uh, cast this person. This is Alison Pearson, as I remember from conventions, right? Wearing these glasses, exactly that, right? I remember that from Panopticon, and looking at it, he brought his artwork around show people. It was very cool. We, I freaking love Alison Pearson stuff. Uh, Alison Pearson was, of course, the uh, uh, successor to... Uh, 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 was it uh, Alice? Uh, who was it? Uh, Andrew Skeleton, right? Uh, is that him today? Is that the same person? That looks like Frank Skinner. <laughs> it could be the same person, I guess. Again, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> um, not really a fan of these uh, uh, Chris uh, Akalos style covers. Un unless I'm going to look like stupid when I read this article and find out they really are Chris Akalos. They kind of look like Chris Akalos style covers, right? Rather than actually being Chris Akalos. Oh, really not interested. <laughs> Although Dan, Dan's fi finally got a bit, uh, been able to watch it. I'm really intrigued what he's got to say. Because of these four cards. Yeah, gee. Whew. I wonder how much they're charging for that, right? Do they? No, they don't, they, they don't have the price there. Um, uh, Robert Fairclough plays tribute to writer Philip Martin, whose career encompassed... He's alive, right? He didn't die. I think he's alive. He encompassed uh, television, radio, and theater together with two unforgettable stories of the Sixth Doctor. And he also did the audio ones. And he also did, he also did a Sill story, right? Gangsters was huge. Uh, Gangsters was really weird. I... Uh, uh, it's the production values are horrible, right? The production values are absolutely like like just painful to watch. Uh, but it's an interesting darn show. I mean, if you can get through the production, which I nearly can't, I really nearly can't. Right? Oh my! This this uh, missing story he wrote uh, was was dire. Thank God they didn't make it. It was absolutely dire. It was uh, like 1950s sexual politics. It done in the 1980s. Not good. <laughs> Not good at all. That, that one was gen genuinely was sexist, right? And I'm a reasonably sexist guy. There's another Sill movie. I got the first one. Uh, it, once it's coming, right? a brand new uh, play from the award-winning Philip Martin. Sill and the Avian Uprising. It's, I'm intrigued. Carla, me intrigued. Uh, let's see, let's see what, it, what, it, what, it, what it says about him. Uh, right. Uh, so much of a while reading novelization of Sill and the... Uh, the, yeah, that's the one I that I that I saw the Sill and the Devil Seas of uh, Ardor, which was uh, at best okay. Um, do, 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 do. Phillips two, 2013 play East of Hashem, uh, Sill and the Avian Uprising, a play that is yet to be staged. Oh, okay, so it's just, it's a play. Uh, does not sound good. It's that it's yet to be staged. Oh, I'm ingenious. Okay, see, I I see Nicola Bryant's name even out the corner of my eye. I'm like, yeah, what, what, what you got to say? Um, I was really thrilled with uh, what Philip wrote in Mind Warp, and I was really thrilled with what they gave me. Uh, my only remit was it's a phenomenal dramatic actor, computer John Nixon says, right, that's what we'll go for then. Uh, so I think I was a bit surprised with what Philip came up with. It, listen, it, that, that was a really good bit of TV, that, uh, that, that Perry 
uh, being in that whole Perry Denouement. And so now they've got a thing about uh, Vengeance on Varos. Oh, okay, Liz, I'm vaguely interested. I, uh, I'm still on board, right? I'm still on board. Well, I, I bought it. So, you know, I'm going to read it, I guess. Uh, oh, comic strip. Comic strip is a, an embarrassment, an absolute embarrassment. Scott Garrett Gray is doing the art and the writing. Uh, he's not up for the art, right? He's not. And there's so many artists who would have done it cheaply for exposure, right? It's just, it's. Uh, it's um, it's unprofessional, right? It's uh, for me. I think it's unpublishable, right? It is. Uh, God bless him. If he was doing his own property, I'd be much more forgiving. But uh, this is just garbage. This is just absolute garbage, and I have no interest in it whatsoever. Uh, and it's still going. Like really? Like like how like how is that okay? This looks so amateurish. But it did. It fits. It fits. It's, it fits the style of Doctor Who, you know, that we're in nowadays. Fact and fiction is Underworld. After doing another thing about uh, Vengeance and Varus, maybe, maybe they've already done Vengeance and Varus. Quite like Underworld, by the way. Uh, not a bit, a bit of a malign story, but I, I have to say, I quite, quite enjoy it. Even the CSO is not that that bad. I guess uh, when they uh, when 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 they print it out on Blu-ray, they'll uh, they'll they'll clean that up a little bit to make it look nicer. Um, more fact and fiction goes on and on and on and on. Uh, okay, there's lots of fact, lots of fiction. Uh, and we're there, and we're done. Like, who, who who wrote this one? That does make a difference. It was Alan, Alan Barnes. Normally knows knows what he's doing. Uh, Alan Barnes. There you go. Uh, just prove I'm not making up. Yeah, Alan Barnes. You can basically trust him uh, to to pull out something good. Reviews. Oh my God, they're reviewing Daleks. Ha if, listen, if they give this anything other than than the worst review humanly possible, let's, okay, let's just start reading this. Uh, viewers familiar with the CGI animated series like Clone Wars or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will notice that this is much more primitive affair. Yeah, so let's get there at once. Once, yeah, no, it was terrible. It was unwatchable in every way. I'm sorry. Two pages they put on that. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna read this on my live stream. Um, Masterful. I quite like Masterful. I think they, yeah, I think that 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 worked pretty well. Uh, and they also got the um, uh. Uh, the book on tape they did, The Terror of the Master, which was really freaking good. It was absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the, again, my only thing I didn't like was there was a casting of this guy to replace J J uh, James James Dreyfus, which I think is because uh, James Dreyfus was cancelled because he said, you know, I think having a penis is a very important part to being a person, you know, I, or, or a vagina, right? You know, I think that I don't think you know that you can zip them on and off, right? I think they're very, very, very important. Um, Fine. Uh, some ads. Okay. Uh, oh, my God. I totally forgot about Time Lord Victorious. And I think everybody did, really. Uh, so this is a big ending on Time Lord Victorious. I, I, have to, I don't care. I, like, I so don't care. I never finished it. Right? I Okay. It doesn't bother me at all. Ne never saw the end. Didn't care in any way, shape, or form. Um, okay. There's some TARDIS books. Uh, the Crossword. The Crossword, I'm always useless at. Let's see what one across is. Parasite that preys on negative impulse. Uh, that'll be, oh, what's it called again? Uh, Mind of Evil. <coughs> I'll look it up. Whatever it is. Well, well let's see one down. Maybe I can work out the first name, the, uh, the first letter. Uh, seven down, associated with Edward Waterfield. Um, Max de Boy. I don't know. I'll think about it later. You're giving a revolution of Daleks and Blazing Ash. That's not very good, does it? Can't wait for that range to come to an end, right? I really can't wait for the range to come to an end. Uh, coming soon. This is not a good cover, and this is thank, thank God the outrage is coming to an end. The the the, the monthly adventures, uh, it just was never has been never it hasn't been good for years. I, I like last couple of years totally missable. Really glad it's going. Quite frankly, stranded to Oh, I don't think I, I listen. I got it all pre ordered. I don't know. I'm re I, listen, I, I'm gonna be really sad not to get stranded three right to to abandon the eighth doctor's um story but like phew. it depends it, de it, de it depends what, what it's like right it depends how intersectional master now i'm looking forward to this i am so looking forward to this and i think it's a good fall putting her with uh uh Ch Ch chase masters in there who still i mean both of them look at them they both look fantastic right they both they both look so hollywood uh, so there you go. That that's that. And um, blogs of doom. Never really read it. Uh, they brought it in when somebody said something that was bad. I can't remember what it was. There was some coded message in it. 
Uh, next month, they got Chris North exclusives. The only exclusive if, ever, if people are trying to get to him, right? I mean, although, uh, uh, yeah, I do see, he, yeah, I mean, he enjoys his big, uh, his Doctor Who character. And I, th I think he's probably one of the best things in it. He's just talented. He's a talented, charismatic person. So he does kind of stick out like a sore thumb in the current era of Doctor Who. Uh, yeah, Time War. I, I'm, I, I got out of the Time War, you know, I, yeah. Uh, I decided I'm sick of paying uh, to hear Lala Ward huff and sigh at me through obnoxious political uh, 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 allegories. Although Richard Armitage as Omega, uh, not Omega as um, Raslon, I think is a pretty is a pretty good idea. And so yeah, the other thing they had is this poster. Let me just zoom in uh, of all uh, a selection of the different Target book covers. Uh, I think it's, it's every story. It looks like it's every story in order. And you get to see the like, yeah the different versions of the cover like the Eric say oh this was there's only been that version that's Andrew Skilleter that's Andrew Skilleter uh where, let's see if we that be uh Alistair Pearson Andrew Skilleter uh Alistair Pearson Alistair Pearson Alistair Pearson yeah Alistair Pearson Alistair Pearson, Alistair Pearson uh Alison Pearson yeah I remember that one um I don't know, but yeah, look, great covers. This is and this is a, a giant poster they 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 came with it. If you get the print print edition, which I think probably makes it worthwhile, right? I mean, in, in in of itself. So there you go, Doctor Who magazine. Is there anything? Is there another page? Oh yeah, we got the other side. Uh, yeah, look, pretty darn interesting. I, I look, I, I people like this poster. This poster has been very very crowd uh, uh, cr uh, crowd pleasing. Is it worth getting this issue? Right, let's have a, let's do a quick page overview. And have a look. Um, pages I would read in this issue. Uh, it, well, okay, fine. I'm going to do... I, I normally read uh, Gallifreyan Guardian. Uh, Collect Forum, no. Uh, I like the, uh, the this year in 1980. Uh, public image, yeah, it's got to be good for laugh. Going to use that for for, uh, uh, for some content. So, okay, but actual articles I'm reading. I'm going to read this one, two, three, four, five pages. Five, six, seven... Uh, eight, nine, yeah, leave me alone. I'm, I don't care about this. Uh, no, no, no. Um, nah, not interested over here. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, whew, um, fact of fiction I can live without. I gotta read this 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, um, 20, 21, 22, 23. 23, page, 23 pages out of 86. Eh, not bad. Not bad. It's a shame the comic strip's garbage, right? I will so read the, read the comic strip. Uh, shame you put Ben Cook in it. I, I, just, I don't understand. Listen, a guy doesn't like people who... It just goes over and goes after and, is, and really viciously assaults people. Uh, insults, not assault. <laughs> he might assault them as well, for all I know. Uh, but like, I think I know a lot of people who used to read Doctor Who magazine who won't get it be because of him. So I, whatever you want to do, it's probably not the best business practice you you, you could have uh, employing him. You could probably find somebody else. And uh, although, again, why Chris Chibnall isn't providing content for Doctor Who magazine is a mystery to me. Should you buy it? Well, you've seen it for yourself. You work it out. If you like it, uh, 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 if you like it, you buy it. But you know, I think you should be buying it. I think you should be buying it. You should be excited for My Indiegogo, two freaking awesome graphic novels. That is going to be well, well, well better than this garbage magazine. Uh, yeah, well, garbage magazine is a harsh word, but they're going to be way, way better uh, with these wonderful articles. So go, go check out My Indiegogo. Uh, sign up for it. That'll be fantastic. Double dozy. My name is Suda Beck and Nico Arabi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell. Ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop.